Centurion's soy sauce, walk along the wall and I'll tell you what it is and why I've got it. Emperor Hadrian was a smuggler, and here we go for complaints from the other regions, must be the most unspoiled and beautiful part of Britain. Polanski had it absolutely right when he filmed that birth. Oops, I mean the Scottish play here. And this is the home of St. Cuthbert, and a fine glass of mead. Here ended the first time. Daddy's ketchup, tomato sauce, call it what you will. He wouldn't have eaten anything without it because basically his food wasn't too good. But, you know, I made this, I knew I was coming up here. I made this about three weeks ago. I've had it married, you know, I've had it macerating is the word ever since. It is anchovies, it's sprats, it's margarine, it's red wine, and it's salt. It's all boiled up, left to ferment for three or four weeks and strain, and there you have it. The Centurion sauce. In fact, we ought to brand it, shouldn't we? Floyd's Centurion sauce could be a big hit. Anyway, you do tend to drop a bit of that into your pork marinade, okay? And also, because they didn't have sugar in those days, and this was a bit tangy and a bit pongy, they used to put in a teaspoonful or two of honey. That's why how many people are called apiarists. I think if I've got my words right, it's a Latin word too, isn't it? Anyway, there it all is. Richard, close up on that. I mean, you can feel it, you can smell it. There's the marinade, there's the pork, the onions, the herbs, the spices and stuff. It's been in there for about 24 hours. Now it has to go wander around here, however you do it. It has to go into my typical, upon wood mark four, or at home, gas mark six, but wood mark four, it goes into there. Four, put a bit on. Richard, I'm talking to you. For about 45 minutes. <laughs> Richard, you wipe your lens. I'll blow my nose. Now, that was a bit too hot. I know I said gas mark four. I can barely see through the smoke and the heat here, but I have got this guy coming to it. I can't do that again, so we're going to live with it, okay? Now listen. <coughs> oh dear, it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I made a little joke about the Roman soldiers throwing their bottles away, but don't be a prat. Don't listen to me. Please don't throw your bottles into the hedges, okay? Okay, Richard, back on the pot. We're not proud on this programme. If we need an expert on, say, the Romans, then the director, sparing no thought for himself, goes straight for nearest McFarland. Hence Donald McFarland. Donald, what did the Romans... I mean, you know, I feel a bit like John Cleese here. I mean, what uh -huh. did the Romans do for us? What, I mean, what did they do when they were here? OK, I think the first thing is if... Can you imagine the culture shock to the locals? I mean, look around you. Mm. Yeah, the locals, the Briganti, the Votadini, the Selgova would live on the tops of these hills in small these tribal... Are people or birds? People, people, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> And um, their quite primitive lifestyle would probably the roast of oxen, everyone would to partake of that. What you had when the Romans arrived is a very highly civilised nation, even by our standards. They introduced a disciplined system of society
silver, I guess. Then you throw in six of the goats.
I didn't cook all my fish. I did save one of these because a customer sitting there complaining like heck because his food hasn't been prepared. So that goes on the grill about five minutes each side. Just get nicely seared. And while that's happily grilling away, I'll just play this for real because this is what happens in restaurants sometimes. I am a restaurateur and things do go wrong, things go dramatically wrong here. However, the sauce I'm going to make for this grilled fish, which would have gone with the baked bass in the salt, is simply fresh Sicilian lemon juice bubbling away in there. Okay. And into this, we drop a little drops of butter and whisk it away. And ten minutes later, the fish is cooked. And it goes onto the plate, a beautifully grilled, fresh bream onto the plate. Now we wander over here. This will give the editor an absolute heart attack trying to cut this lot. But what can we do? We've come all this way. We can't go away and say, well, I didn't know things. I didn't know how to do Just playing this off the cuff. fish soup with all the little bits of fish and vegetable that can get through the mesh. Okay, that's all done. Now, the next most important part is the couscous. Now, the couscous is down here, already cooked. There is splendid stuff. So the garnish of the whole thing, we've got some little crown. They go into a preheated pot with olive oil. Like that. The lid goes on and they will in there and find in a few moments. Now we have some of the drop it over here. We don't it is a two kitchen secret. Over here, I've got some splendid prawns and red peppers marinated in olive oil and paprika. Now you can squeeze some lemon juice on it. As I said before, the Sicilian lemons are absolutely wonderful. They're only meant to be sour things, but these are actually slightly sweet. And they're quite the best lemons I've ever tasted in my life. Done it. This goes on down here onto my charcoal grill. Absolutely perfect. They've opened up beautifully. Okay.
by the fishermen would use these huge boats to form a series of chambers with their nets into which the fish are shepherded. Finally, when there is sufficient fish, the net is closed and they haul the tuna out. Fishermen's lodges in the Antarctic have been all over the place. And they're all the same. They're all awful. Universally awful. Why, when you book a room for two, do you only get three pillows? Why, when you book a room for two, is there only one shampoo? Why? Sister Ramses, sir. 